welcome to Stone Creek Grove Midsummer. This is, I think, our fourth or fifth year doing this particular version of this, right? So people who have done Stone Creek Ritual before will be somewhat familiar. So Midsummer, right? Uh, the sun is as much an influence on our lives as it is ever going to be throughout the course of the year. And it turns out today is actually the solstice, so we're even better on that astronomically wise. Um, for agriculturally, we're a lot of us have planted gardens, stuff is growing. It's very much a bright and sunny environment. So today we're going to be getting together and celebrating in a Norse style because um, in modern times, Norse peoples are still celebrating Midsummer as a fairly major, it's, it's mostly a secular holiday nowadays, but people are still, in, especially in Sweden, they are gathering out, they will go out to whatever rural areas they can get, visit their friends, have cookouts, they even put up poles that are similar to maypoles. So that's one reason we do this in a Norse style. Um, so I'm going to assume that some people who are online right now have never done any kind of ADF style ritual before, never experienced that. So the key thing to note, um, there's gonna be a bunch of things you will find familiar, whether you're Wiccan or actually, even if you're used to sort of, you know, American Protestantism or something like that, you will hear prayers, you will hear songs, you will hear chants. You will also hear, this is the bit that's not familiar to Christians. You will see us giving physical offerings of things, of drinks, of oil, of food, of other things that are precious to us as our way of honoring the various beings that we're going to be talking to. We generally honor all of the various spiritual powers of the world, but we, even though we have a particular focus today, and we will be, there's an opportunity fairly early on in the ritual to honor our beloved dead, the powers of nature spread all around us and the deities. And these characters, these categories are very vague. So that you could you could put whoever you want in them, um, you know, wh whichever beings you personally would like to honor, you can put them in those categories and invite them into our ritual space as they're being mentioned. Um, in, in Norse terminology, our beloved dead, will be known as um, Alfar and Desir, the Alfs being thought of as mostly male ancestral figures. And the Desir are the wise ancestral women who watch over our tribe of people, who watch over their descendants and look out for their well-being. So we honor them. Then we honor our nature spirits, all the birds and trees and agricultural produce and mushrooms and every little tiny thing that helps keep this whole world alive. And we see the spiritual side of that, we will be talking to them as the land vetter, the land spirits. Um, also that language will probably use the term light, W-I-G-H-T, wicked. It's, it's not, I think it's still G-H, no, it's with a C-H-T. I'm, I'm spelling it wrong. Anyway, um, that that doesn't mean the color white. That means a spirit. It means a being who is, say, attached to, like right over there, there's a nice aging tree. It's been around here longer than I have. <laughs> and we might think of that tree as having a spiritual side as well as a physical side. And we want to give them due honor. And then we have the deities. We will have the Aesir and Vanir. The Aesir are generally um, best, these are the best known Norse gods, Odin, Thor, Frey, Loki, Heimdall, that whole crowd. And uh, the Vanir, who are more agriculturally associated, those are, that's actually Frey, Freya, and their father, Njord. So, just, um, and this is also your opportunity. If you personally have deities, you wish to invite the pe beings that you work with on a regular basis, that's your chance to invite them in as well. So, let's see, I covered a lot of stuff. 
So today is very much a celebration of the sun. Um, we see it, and well, we hope to see more of it, but it's, it's been a sunny day most of the day. She's, she's around, and uh, Norse terminology, she'll be known as Suna, and she is certainly a very welcome part of our lives. Because without her, uh, it's cold, it's, it's freezing, it's dark. We, humans do not do well in that kind of environment. So we'll be giving particular honor to the sun. We'll be honoring her with a sun wheel, which we set aflame so that we can have a sun fire in our own ritual space. Let's see. So this particular ritual is focused very much around Seif and her husband, Thor. Now, Seif, the problem with honoring Seif in a ritual is that there's very little lore about her. Um, we see vague references. We, we, know, we know her to be golden haired, by which we mean that her hair was shaved off completely and then replaced with hair made of the metal gold by, by dwarves. Um, there is some certain accusations about her made in uh, the Loki Senna, which is the flitting of Loki, which is in the Poetic Eddas, about why that happened. But that's about all we really have as far as myths about her. And it's so we've had to dip into the waters of speculation and educated guessing and trying to trying to understand her more thoroughly. And we've landed on a few ideas, and one of them is see sheaf. Sounds similar. Now, possible false cognates and all that for etymology wise, but we tend to associate, we tend to associate Seif and Sheaf. So we're, we're associating her with the grain and the wheat in particular, which grown up wheat, it's nice and golden and we will actually be seeing sheafs of wheat in the ritual. So, um, and we want her to succeed in this time of year, time of growing. I should also mention in Scandinavia, Northern times, this is approximately, sorry, got somebody buzzing on Zoom at the same time, on uh, Facebook at the same time. Um, this is also approximately when planting season would happen. A lot of the traditions associated with Beltana in the Celtic world are actually associated with midsummer in the Norse world. And it mostly has to do with the fact that you're reaching the same point to the agricultural cycle six weeks later, six weeks later in these colder climates. So, so that's, that's just something to think about. Um, see, so she's very much associated with the grain, this golden hair and agriculture. So now we can talk a little bit about Thor, her husband. Thor is um, first thing to note about Thor, uh, Norse Thor is very different in a lot of ways for Marvel Cinematic Universe Thor. Uh, for example, he is canonically Redbeard in Norse, in the Norse world. We're, we're in the middle of virtual briefing. Um, <laughs> so um, that's the first thing to note about him. And in this case, he, he's, he and the, Thor in the lore, there's a lot of lore about Thor being poetic, I didn't really intend to. Uh, he's, he's usually not described as overly bright. Uh, Odin in particular, there's a wonderful scene where Odin makes him take a, like a 50 mile detour just by tricking him in a conversation over a stream. Um, so he's, he's not overly bright, but what he is is loyal, protective, and he is, of course, associated with Mjolnir, his hammer. And with Mjolnir also tends to be associated with thunder. And we've actually been getting a bit of rumblings up there. We're hoping not to encourage them too much because I like staying a little bit dry. But, uh, but that does mean um, hail in Norse lore, especially the rune, is, is associated with the rune Hagalas. And the Hagalaz rune also brings with it 
it can mean sort of destructive power, but it can also mean the bringer of fertility. These, these, the hailstones were sort of associated with seeds. And so the idea, and so one idea that is coming into this ritual is that Thor is helping to fertilize the land and making the land prosperous. And then Sif comes in and is bringing her influence and the grain grows. And that allows we the folk to eat well for another year. Kind of important when agriculture is the way you're eating. There's no, there's no trip to all these to get your food um, in ancient pagan days. The other place where Thor really has an influence on agriculture is in another associated rune, Thurazaz, the thorn. He is the protector of the crops. He is the he is the one who you you build you would build um, fences, a boundary of thorns, of thorn bushes to help keep away pests, varmints other things that are going to eat your crops before you do. So the Thorza's rune was sort of seen as a representation of that protective power. And Thor, Thor it's, it's a similar sound to Thor. So a lot of people have associated this Thorza's rune with the dot god Thor. And so he is going to operate very much in a protective way. So, this is really what the focus is of this, right? It's really a very agricultural holiday. We are trying to connect ourselves with the cycle of the land, of the forest, of the crops, so that we can help make our own civilization. Uh, a bit more about idiot ritual style, since I've got a bunch of time. We've gone pretty quickly so far. <laughs> and so we spend the first part of our ritual, we will be creating a sacred space for us to operate in. A space that marks the center of the world and any home shrines that you have or that you're setting up or doing, experiencing this ritual and are also the ritual center of the world. And they are all connected together at the same time for our purposes. So, to do that, we will be setting up our sacred triad of a fire, well of water, and the tree, which you can think of as Yggdrasil, connecting the roots and the crowns. Um, the wells, wells in Norse mythology, uh, there's a couple of very famous ones. For example, Mimir's well, where Odin sacrifices his eye so that he can see the future. Um, there are so there are important wells in the in the lore. In fact, there's one at at least two of the roots of Victorzel. I think maybe three. All three have a well at them. Blanking on some of that lore. Uh, but the uh, and then we have the fire. A sacred fire is one of the few things we know was absolutely at the center of every single Indo-European ritual that we complex that we've ever encountered. Um, you can see that from Vedic Agni cult to the Hellenic Hestia and, and North Roman Vesta cults, and also up into the Norse world and in the Celtic world, you see plenty of ritual fire at the center of a sacred space. So we've got that. And it also connects us conveniently to Suna, the fire of the heavens, and also connects us to general sky power. And then we've got the tree, the world tree, which is more attested to in Norse lore than just about anywhere else. So think of, and you will see in our ritual space, the pillar right in the middle, connecting the, as we sometimes say, rooted deep and crowned high, just like an actual tree. So we'll spend the first part of a ritual creating that sacred space. You will then be opening up gates. And by opening the gates, and in a Norse context, asking two, two mythical figures, Heimdall and Modgud, Heimdall being the god who watches the Rainbow Bridge to Asgard, and Modgud, who watches the Jalabrunna, the Golden Bridge, to the Underworlds. These beings are watching and guiding and keeping us safe as we journey. Got a couple of drops. Uh, 
and you can speak to the deities and the elves and the deeses and the uh, the land pits here. You can speak to them at any time. But with the gates open, we're really trying to develop a strong connection with them. We're sort of saying uh, we're welcoming this communication time. We're really trying to get everyone's attention. And we're trying to get help. And I think we may have to move under a roof. So I think we will. How close you can I'm, I'm pretty close to that. So I'll just finish up. up. All right. So we will. Uh, so we will make our offerings to those kindreds that I spoke of earlier, of our beloved dead, powers of nature, and our beloved deities. We will honor Thor. We will honor Seif. I think in the other order. So honor Seif and honor Thor. We will then take an omen to try and get an idea of what the powers that we've just honored have to tell us. Learn a bit from the runes there. And assuming all is well, we will bless some drinks. And you are invited at this time to have a drink in your own home. Oh. I think we're going to move under new <laughs> roof. We will honor Thor, we will honor Seed. We, we will bless some drinks. And at that time, you are welcome to, if, you, if you're following along with us at home, this is a good time to have a drink with you right in front of you that will also receive that blessing. And once that's received, we will be basically just thanking all the beings that have joined us for this ritual and close up the gates, just returning more to our normal cell. And then after that, we will be feasting. So whatever your next meal is after the ritual, we will bless and invite you to enjoy. So I think at this point, if there are no particular questions and I can't see any questions being asked, so someone on the other end of the line will have to actually tell me if there are any questions about what we're about to do. I think we're pretty close to done with the pre ritual briefing and we'll be mostly taking a brief break after this to answer questions, uh, to, um, handle biological needs and also wait for the rain to stop. Are there any people like pressing questions about what we're about to do? I currently don't see any. You really don't see any. Okay, that's a perfectly good answer. So we'll be taking a break and I believe right around five. Five? Assuming the weather assuming the weather turns right around five o'clock, we will be back in the Nemeton. Um, okay. ready to do good. a ritual. Come we now as the people
breathe again and feel the new life that surrounds us in the trees, in the earth, in the air around us. And as you breathe, feel roots extending from the bottoms of your feet, growing deep and strong with each breath until you reach the waters that flow under the earth Breathe again and feel those waters begin to flow up your roots through your feet and your legs, pulling for a moment in your loins. Breathe again and those waters flow up your torso and pull for a moment in your heart. Feel those waters healing and revitalizing you, cleansing you. Breathe again and the waters go up your neck to your head, clearing your mind, clearing your thoughts as those waters flow down your hands. Breathe again and feel the sky Feel the light of the sun here upon us. Feel the warmth. Feel the fertility of that light of the sun that grows within us as it flows down your head and flashes and mingles with the waters in your head, flows down your neck your heart flashing and filling the waters of your heart flowing down your torso and flashing and mingling with the waters in your loins and to the earth. Feel those connections with the earth and the sky as you are made ready for the right to come. Let us own together to solidify this union of earth and sky. Oh. We welcome forth Yorth, mother of Thor, daughter of Nott and Onar. From fertile fields we know you near and ask of you your blessing. Bring bounty to your children in this time of change. Earth mother, gaze on our work with gracious eyes and bless our stead with harvest joy. Earth Mother, accept our sacrifice. Earth Mother, accept our sacrifice. We call to Bragi now for inspiration. O oh, Bragi, wizened ward of Edun's apple, frith, frith, giver, frith weaver, mead minder, oak drink, oath drinker. Runes written upon thy silvery scaldic tongue confer upon us Kavasir's kenning as we work the work of wisdom. Hail Bragi! Hail Bragi! And we go now to make our peace with the outdwellers. Outdwellers, Outgarth. Giants, all you powers of storm, 
and strife. I, we know you're here. <laughs> we saw you. But this is your part. Trouble not our sacred time. And within ourselves, there are those things that call out to the outdwellers, the outgarth, our coldness, our moistness, all that which stands in our way. Let us also cast it aside for this for this time. Outdwellers, accept our sacrifice. Outdwellers, accept our sacrifice. We now purify this sacred space, as is our tradition, with fire and with water. By fire and by water. Renew your center, my friends. We gather here at the turning of midsummer towards the harvest season. This solstice day is the longest day of the year when the land exuberantly springs to life in every corner of Croft, 
and wildwood, when every herb bears a blossom, and when the winter wheat, our hope of bread, flings its tawny tassels and awaits the reaper's scythe. We hope the summer rains will be gentle and plentiful so that we can reap bountiful's harvest from our labors to fill our larders from the common cold. We will sing songs and give gifts in honor of the marriage of Thor and Sif, whose blessed union is as the skies fertilizing rain and the quickening lightning to the verdant land upon which our cultivated crops grow. Let us open the ways between. Yggdrasil stands before us, the world tree, the axis of all. Beneath of its mighty roots is Unabruna, the well of weird, stretching from the grove here in Midgard to the dwellings of the gods in Asgard and Bifrost, the rainbow bridge that is all aflame, the stretching of hell, the land, the dead, the Yalla bridge that is thatched with gold and clangs under the footsteps. Heimdall, we hail, high-minded, youth of Himmelbjörg. We ask you to hear us, guardian of the gates of Asgard. Watch and ward us as we work the elder ways. Lend us your might, your main, so that we may open the gates between. Heimdall, accept our offering.
to the holy ones of the sea and air, the wild woods and the green growth, passionate, dark, and mysterious ones. Hail to the Vanir this midsummer day. Hail to the mighty ones, oldest and boldest, wisest and brightest, who dwell in Asgard. Hail to the Aesir this midsummer day. As we sing. Hail all the gods. now make offering to the gods of the occasion, to the god of thunder and change, of storms and the blessing of the earth, and the, to the lady of the harvest and the golden chief, Thor and Thief. Thunderous Thord, ruddy beard, bold and brave. Ormond Grinder's foe, Thruder's father, Magni and Modi's sire, engirdled in Meginyord, the Harn Ripper. <laughs> Gripping Molnir's might, you protect our crops from storms, Ettens. Be with our grove, a bountiful bring marriage blessings and gentle rains for the fertile fields to grow good harvests to hold for having throughout the common cold we offer you this oil we offer you this incense and we offer you this mead Hail Thor, accept our offerings. Hail, Hail Thor, accept our offerings. offerings. Resplendent Seif, golden haired goddess of grain, loveliest of ladies, beautiful bride of the thunder god, Hrungnir's hunger and harrowing end, iron blade rival, mother of Ul, mother of Uther, peacemaking, mead bearing high near and here our hearty hailing we we chiefs we seek with your willing favor grant us good seasons healthy harvest with happy hearts and hearts full of fertile fire hail thief hail thief we offer to you golden lady 
an offering of golden oil. We offer to you, fragrant lady, an offering of wonderful smelling incense. And we offer to you, lady of the harvest, not only mead of honey, but also of elderberry. Mm -hmm. Golden thief, accept our offerings. Golden thief, accept our offerings. And now my friends, many of you may have come here with an offering of your own. It is customary at this point in our right to offer these praise offerings. And now it is time to bring our offerings, form of physical sacrifices, poetry and song. We ask that those with silent offerings feel free to come up and give those to the praise to the fire for the offering shaft while performances are going on. While this is going on, we will passing around the Grove's relic of Seif, ever renewing gift that you, we will offer to the fire when we are complete, our fire will working. Add your blessings and your wishes to this charm that it may bear the Lady Seif, your hopes for that you wish to bring to fruition. This charm of Seif will lie upon the land when we burn our wheel. As the greening land lies receptive to the energies of the sky and the rain that falls to make it renew. And even as we take from it each cycle to nourish ourselves. Behold the charm of seas. Behold the charm of seas. Behold. Behold the charm of seas. So let's start off. Who's got praise offering? Thank you. 
Does anyone else have a praise offering? Well, this turned out to be such a beautiful day, and I'm grateful. So if anybody knows the words to today, um, please feel free to sing along. Today, while the blossoms still cling to the vine, I'll taste your strawberries. I'll drink your sweet wine. A million tomorrows shall all pass away ere I forget all the joy that is mine today. I'll be a dandy and I'll be a rover. You'll know who I am by the songs that I sing. I'll sit at your table. I'll sleep in your clover. Who cares what the morrow shall bring? Today, while the blossoms still cling to the vine, I'll taste your strawberries, I'll drink your sweet wine. A million tomorrows shall all pass away, ere I forget all the joy that is mine today. I can't be contented with yesterday's glory. I can't live on promises winter to spring. Today is my moment. Right now is my story. I'll laugh and I'll cry and I'll sing. Today, while the blossoms still cling to the vine, I'll taste your strawberries, I'll drink your sweet wine. A million tomorrows shall all pass away, ere I forget. All the joy that is mine today. Well sung. Well sung. Yeah. 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 Anyone else have a praise offering? Lina. O mighty Thor and golden-haired Thief, on this longest and your wedding day, we call to thee. We call with the praise and love and hope for the way your blessings sustain the folk. Now earth has grown the richest green, sweet fruits with bright flowers grown in between. And so too for this grove's good company, I give praise, Thor and Sif, to thee. Well done. Well done. Among the folk, are there any other offerings of praise? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> coming. Keep them coming. <laughs> to wandering Thor. My time is up and the ship bell chimes, so raise the cup and think the times of this poor sail upon the sea, whose passing is but memory. Tis not that I would have you think of this but as a friendly drink, 
with my heart i love you truly though i'm forced to treat you cruelly for the fever's upon me my captain is calling in i cannot stay with thee my destiny is calling i'll never be free but i'll do what i must captive of my wanderlust the tide is turned and so we sail this brief sojourn has now grown stale the wanderlust has me indeed i cannot wear my travels lead the captain asks if I'm a feared, a smile tangled in his beard. His laughter tells me he must know the pain that I now undergo. For the fever's upon me, my captain is calling in. I cannot stay with Hey, my destiny is calling. I'll never be free, but I'll do what I must, captive of my wanderlust. Oh, 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 oh. Thor. Hail Thor. Are there any more praise offerings? So we have given offerings of poetry and industry to the holy couple. Let us now join our voices to send these offerings to the holy couple, carrying our love and our humor. <laughs> oh, <all right. laughs> We're going to do the Druid's hum. Oh. arise on the fire. Let our voices sound in the well. Let our words travel with Ratatosk up and down in Yggdrasil's branches and the roots to the nine worlds. O oh, Thor and Thief, we give you our love, our respect, and our devotion as we pray you, Thor and Thief, accept now these offerings. Thor and Seed, accept our offerings. Breathe deep, children of Earth. For a moment, remember your center and your power. And see in the center a high seat upon which sits the Valva who speaks. It is time to sing on the sage's seat at Arda Bruna. I saw, but was silent. I saw and thought. I listened to men's lore. Of runes I heard deeming. Their reed was not silent. At the hall of Har, in the hall of Har, thus I heard them say. I heard them say the mother is with us. I heard them say the birch grows strong.
I heard them say the day is with us. I heard them say the day grows bright. And I heard them say that Thor is with us. I see the thorn growing on the trees. I say this is a great omen for this time period. The Earth Mother, the day, and the thorn. What say you? Now, let us call for the blessing waters, <laughs> the waters of life. A gift calls for a gift. As we have offered you, holy ones, we ask you for blessing in return. Thor and Thief, Acer and Vanyar, goddess and gods, give us your blessings. Let us drink this holy draft and bless these waters in these vessels here that it also flows to the vessels of those who are at home. Behold the waters of life. Behold the waters of life. Now. Let us charge our glasses as we sing. Get the drummers. Oh, the waters raise the cup. Drink your share of wisdom. Being strength and love. Oh, 
Now let us rest in silence with the power of the between in us and know the blessing as it manifests itself in our lives. The sun wheel awaits. This charm of peace we have placed at its peak. The right chief with us, we've placed her below the wheel. She's below the spinning wheel in the sky, the sun. We burn this wheel to be a reflection of a practice of our ancestors who rolled a burning solar wheel down high hills in honor to and in imitation of the sun at its zenith. Our wheel is mounted because we have no high hill, but nevertheless, our wheel will spin and burn as the old wheels did. It is our hope that the wheel will burn well and evenly and that its path be of spinning be clean and true. As we've known from the past, sometimes this is not the case, but <laughs> bringing blessings to all who see it, no matter what, in wonder and hope that it be charged by holy fire for us and by the quickening lightning. We hope by this burning, my friends, that we might be filled with the blessing of Thor, friend of the farmer and husband to Sif's crop covered land as she now burgeons with growth. We remember and hail the Thunarad, the echoing sound of Thor's chariot that can be heard and will be heard when this thing burns in the coming of the storm <laughs> and so the fertilizing <laughs> rain. <laughs> We hope by this burning, we might be filled with the blessing of Thor, friend of the farmer, husband to cease crop covered land, as she now burgeons with <laughs> growth. We remember and hail Thunorod, the echoing sound of Thor's chariot that came a herd in the coming of this storm. It did. Yeah. It needed repeating. It's okay if you like it. For the drum roll. <laughs> Seer, by Thor and Sif, offerings have we given and blessings have we received from the land of Tyr, Alfar and Deser, Aesir and Deser, Aesir and Aesir and Bonner. Type. <laughs> There's Bonadis. You can be both Deser and Bonner. <laughs> but now it is time to return to our common world, to continue our feast here in our holy stead in Midgard always remembering that we mirror the halls of the Holy Ones, 
when our love for them is in our hearts and our bellies are full with their blessings. You join in our hearts. Let us carry the magic from the grove into our lives and work. Each time we offer to the powers, they become stronger and more aware of our needs and our worship. Now, as we prepare to depart, let us give thanks to those who have aided us. Thor and Steve, for the blessings you have bestowed upon our work, we thank you. Thor and Steve, we, we thank, thank you. Hey, Steve and Vanya. Hey, Steve and Vanya, for joining us at our fire and aiding us in our magic this day. We thank you. Aesir and Vanir, we thank you. Aesir and Vanir, we thank you. Honored Alfar, beloved Desir, all you who have passed before us, we remember you with honor and thank you for your blessing. Alfar and Desir, we thank you. Alfar and Desir, we thank you. Lanvatir, spirits of here and in your hearth and home, we thank you. Lanvatir, we thank you. To all those powers that have aided us, we, we say, say again, we, we thank, you. thank you. Now, my friends, see the receding mist and the burnt Yule wreath. <laughs> Yule Smoke. <laughs> That's what that is. <laughs> See the receding mist and the smoke of this wreath fade completely away. The well, the fire, the tree becoming the common tools they were before. And remember that while our grove fades and the visions and memories of our right are there for you to use, to remember, to carry to our common world, and to tell stories about. <laughs> <laughs> and now we say to our gatekeepers I'm the water of ways for your presence and your power for your guiding and guarding our way we say thank you I'm doll we thank you I'm doll we thank you most good water of the ways for your presence and power for guiding and guarding we say we thank you most good, we thank you. Now, by the keepers of the gates, we end what we began. Let the fire be but flame. Let the well now be but water. Let the world tree be again a pillar. And let all be as it was before, save for the blessings and the joy that we have received. Let the gates be closed. Let, Let the, the gates, gates be closed. closed. Chris Weaver, Mead Minder, for conferring Kavasir's Kenning on us, we say, Bragi, we thank you. Bragi, we thank you. Mother yours, to we, you we return all we leave unused. Uphold us now in the world as you have in our right. Mother yours, we thank you. Mother yours, we thank you. And one more time before we go, let us bless the feast that awaits us for all who gave their bodies and lives for this meal and those for those who are at home. We give blessings and praise for all who toiled to harvest and prepare their meals here at our potluck and those who are at home and for your next meal, if you should have to put it later. We give blessings and praise for all who share this meal and fellowship. We give you blessings and praise. Bless the feast. Bless, Bless the, the feast. feast. Hail, 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 hail. The right, the right has, has ended. ended. Woo! Yeah. Yeah.